I had a couple times like I don't think I'm making the right decision. I, hmm. yo, I, I just started get second doubting myself, and um, we would talk through the plan. You know, we'd sit down, talk through our plan, what we were doing, why we were doing this, how we were going to affect and benefit our children's lives and um she would always be bring me back around you know you you don't need to like sit down and grind for hours on a certain topic mm. take these short little 20 minute sessions of uninterrupted focus study session you know time or effort into the project and then take a five minute break hello everyone and welcome to the life edge podcast i'm your host chris daffo today i I got our special guest with us. His name is Dakota, and he is the bearded IT dad. So, Dakota, welcome to the Life Edge podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Awesome. So why don't you take a brief moment um, as we get started here and just tell us a little bit about yourself, what it is you do, and what you offer. Oh, like you said, my name's Dakota. I'm the bearded IT dad on YouTube, and... The Bearded IT Dad was a, it formed around my passion for technology. Uh, my day job, I'm a director of network operations. Uh, on the YouTube channel, I give advice and insight on how to start and advance your career in the IT field. So awesome. So is that, um, in all forms of IT? So I, I guess let's go back a little bit and yeah. just, just, help me because I'm very naive in this subject. What is IT? Like, let's start, let's start there and explain what yeah. IT is. IT is short for information technology. And, uh, it really has to do with anything that deals with computers that can be networking. It can be desktop support. Uh, cybersecurity is very popular. Um, IT is just a general bucket term for, you know, computers and networking so um you know that's it's it's a very fun and can be a very rewarding field and uh sometimes people need a little bit of help getting into the field and that's where i come in with advice and career coaching so why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into this position yeah. Uh, so before I was in IT, I was actually a bulldozer operator, to believe it or not. Um, and I made really good money at it, too. I was making over $70,000 a year as a bulldozer operator. And it was easy money. I mean, I would sit in an air-conditioned cab all day, listen to music. But I just wasn't being mentally challenged. Mm-hmm. Um, I got bored quickly, um, you know, and finally I got tired of doing work to keep a roof over my head. I wanted to start doing work to enjoy work. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to my wife and told her that. And uh, I told her, look, I've always been really interested in technology. I think I can make make a go at this. So I jumped into IT. Um, shortly after I got into the IT field, I was approached by a fellow YouTuber and was like, you know, you really have a knack for teaching people how stuff works. And I really think you need to create your own YouTube channel. I'm going to help you start it. And that's for, well, that's where I started my YouTube channel. It was originally named IT Career Skills. And then later, I kind of wanted to personalize it more and brand it around myself, hence the bearded IT dad. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been an amazing journey. That's that's so crazy because your your story is a lot like mine where I was in a career field where I, I was a welder and I was a welder by trade and here I am starting up this small tech company, growing tech company, and the the two do not go hand in hand at all. And yeah. So what was the intrigue to move from bulldozer into IT? Like you just enjoyed computers or so growing up, I always had a huge love and passion for technology. Um, I, I've been told my very first words were what it do. Um, you know, growing up, I would take apart computers and various electronics around the house and attempt to put them back together. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, when I decided to make this career change, um, I kind of reflected back on what I really enjoyed in life. And in high school, I, you know, I enjoyed electronics class. Uh, we had a Cisco networking course as well. And, um, you know, I was trying to figure out, you know, I knew I, I had a family at the time and I knew I needed a career change that would provide for my family financially. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to make sure it was something that, again, I would enjoy. So uh, I went after the IT career field and started to kind of talk to people in the field and figure out what it would take to make the switch. And 
really, it was surprising to me that um, it didn't actually take as much as I thought. You know, a lot of times making a career change is a really big ordeal where you have to go back to college or school and stuff mm. like that. IT is one of those fields where uh, you can get into the field with no prior work experience, no college education, and no like specialized certifications. It is possible to land an entry-level job and move up within the field without all the extra legwork. So um, I ended up landing a job just like that. Like I said, I, I was a college dropout and I had no prior experience. So I landed a job and it quickly evolved from there. How, <laughs> how long did you know as you were the um, bulldozer operator? Like what was the thought process? Was it, okay, I want to go into IT and next week you're in IT? Or was there a transition period that you kind of went through there? There was. So when I first kind of realized, hey, I want to make the switch, uh, it was months of kind of studying in my free time and just kind of passively studying different topics, um, mm. watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts, trying to kind of get a sense for the field. And then about a month or two into that, actually, I was let go um, from being a bulldozer operator. Um, and I kind of in a panic because we had no savings. Um, you know, this was... 2008, the housing market wasn't doing too mm. great. We just bought our first house. We had three kids. And uh, I'm like, well, this is a sign. This is a sign that it's time for me to make the switch. You know, I either can get another really frustrating job that I dread going to every day that's taxing on my body physically and mentally, or I can go try to get something I enjoy. Uh, so, it was, I did just that. Um, I kind of picked up and started immediately applying for jobs. And unfortunately, in the area I lived, when you're first trying to get into IT field, sometimes if you live in a very small town, there might not be a lot of jobs. You might have to locate, relocate. And that's what we end up having to do. Mm. And it was funny thing is we kind of picked the area before the job came. And the day uh we were literally packing up our u-haul i got the call that i got a job in that area in it so um you know it's it was a couple months to make that transition but this field is really you know it's really versatile and for some people it might take a couple months to make that switch mm. other people it might be a week if you are really on top of the ball and motivated yeah so it sounds like for you though a lot of the decision was kind of forced in a sense because you you lost you lost the job um, operating the bulldozer and it made that transition a whole lot easier. So what would you say to people who are on the fence still sitting in a good job but I mean cuz I know the ex the experience. I was sitting yeah. there making great money but I was miserable. Like I I was yeah. completely miserable and had it not been for my wife, I, I got a kick in the pants from my wife where she's like, hey, you need to make make a change or we're not going to survive this because like, exactly. you come home, you're not happy. You don't like nobody wants to be around you and you just don't feel very productive in the world. So how do you what would you say to somebody that's stuck right in that position? It's it's a difficult and tough place to be in. Um, I've been there before and. At the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you. Hmm. Um, and you got to have your well-being at mind. Remember, you know, life is short. And, you know, you shouldn't be working just to go to work. You should be working at something you enjoy working at. Um, and it's going to be scary. It's going to be hmm. scary making that switch. It absolutely will be. There's no way around it. But... IT is also one of those fields you can, uh, quickly realize that you can scale up very quickly. And even if you do have to take a pay cut to break into the field, it will take no time at all to be back and surpassing your old working wage. Um, you know, just having that motivation. So, you know, the, the, th the thought that comes to mind is if you've ever seen Indiana Jones in the last crusade, when he's going for the, the Holy Grail and he takes that like leap of stuff, the faith out into mm -hmm. the canyon and, you know, you know, it looks like he's about to fall into the abyss and you just got to take that leap of faith. That's, that's one thing I always, you know, think of. And, um, it will pay off. Just knowing it will pay off in the long run is a huge uh, comfort. Mm. Um, so why don't we jump into a little bit about what it is that you offer? And right now you say you you offer coaching for those jumping into the IT profession. Tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so this is actually something new I've recently started offering in the last couple months. And uh, at first, in all honesty, I was... I was unsure about it. I kind of mm. had that. Imp- we talk a lot about imposter syndrome in the IT field. You know, you know, feeling like an imposter, like you're not worthy if you don't know enough. Um, but I did. I knew. I knew what I need to. Uh, you know, the information I could pass along because um, I had helped many people land that first entry level job. So I decided to start offering career coaching. And within the first week or two of offering career coaching, I was having people sign up right away. I'm like, this is kind of cool. Uh, people actually value my opinion. And at first, you know, I was still very kind of felt like an imposter giving these people advice on how to free write resumes and tweak their LinkedIn profiles to um, appear better to recruiters and stuff. Mm-hmm. But after I got done with those first couple sessions, I had uh, those people reach back out to me by the end of that week saying, Dakota, you were amazing. I've landed four different interviews just this week from using your advice. And to me, that really solidified, okay, I'm doing something right here. And uh, it's really starting to take off with people that a lot of times, you know, you get into that feeling that you're stuck in a rut. You're just working that miserable job. And sometimes you just need someone telling you, you know, to hold your hand through that process. And that's what I try to offer with the career coaching is like, okay, this is what your resume needs to do. These are the type of jobs you need to apply. This is the timeline you need to do this, this, and this. And walk them through that process. And uh, it, it just works. So, yeah, I, th- I think right now, Coaching is a coaching in general is a, is a booming industry right now, but I think that's because people are finally realizing how underrated it is as far as really helping you make those leaps and make those jumps in your life to, to achieve new levels of success in your business or your career or your family relationships. Um, and, and that's a perfect like example of that. I mean, I have absolutely business coaches that we're using. I have YouTube coaches that I'm using. Um, and it just levels you up because you get to, I, you get to use somebody else's experience. The people you're coaching, go ahead. The people you're coaching, they get to, they get to learn all the mistakes that you've already figured out without having to make them. Exactly. And, you know, you, you can't be an expert at it all. You know, you can't learn everything. You know, if you're super motivated, you can learn a lot, but you, you still, it's not going to replace the person who has been there and gone through that and knows what works and what doesn't work and list this, this, these facts and stay away from these facts because, you know, this and this and that. And, um, that's really what the, you're paying for is their knowledge and expertise to help guide you and, you know, it a lot of times it's it's such beneficial when you finally pull the trigger to do that. It's 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 well worth it. Yeah, and just even the, sometimes just the clarity that you get from having just being able to vent your thoughts to somebody else. Um, but right now, with the I mean, you're in the technology space, and yeah, to grow and advance in in this world we live in, it's like speed is important. And I feel yeah. that the coaching gives you that speed that you need to be able to keep moving forward in order to stay relevant because you like, you know, with YouTube and stuff, like you got to stay relevant right now. Absolutely. And if, if anything, at least gives you the affirmation that you're going the right direction and you're doing the correct things you need to do, you know, cause that's, you know, a lot of times you feel like you're working towards this goal that you're never achieving. And sometimes you just need the, that pat on the back. It's like, Nope, you're doing the right thing. You just need to keep on going a little bit further. Mm-hmm. So with your clients, is there like common struggles that you see that, that you could help the audience, the listeners right now? So the, one of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, people come to me saying, look, I'm, I've applied for all these jobs, but I'm never getting calls for interviews. You know, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm sending my resume out to hundreds of people, but I never get a call back for an interview. And I said, well, frankly, to be honest with you, it's probably because your resume is garbage. Um, you know, well, let's take, let's rework your resume. If you aren't, aren't getting called back for interviews, then that means you're not making it into the hiring manager's hands. You must have something wrong with your resume. Let's take a look at it and see how we can reword your resume because the average hiring, hiring manager or HR department spends at best 
eight seconds looking over a resume before they mm. decide if they're going to invite you for an interview or not. So you have to make it as simple as possible for them to find the information that they're looking for as quickly as possible. Because if they take a quick scan of your resume and don't see those keywords that they're looking for, in, in the garbage can to go. So that's the biggest piece of advice I have. And that's the biggest uh, struggle I see a lot of people having is just admitting that their resume is not working, you know, mm. because a lot of resumes can be a sensitive subject. You're kind of putting yourself out there for everyone to kind of judge you and your work history. And typically, you know, there's two, two types of people. There's people that put a lot of heart into their resumes and there's people that just kind of throw them together because they don't know what they're doing. So that can be a sensitive subject and it takes, it takes a lot of crafting and molding to make it really work for them. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned in there, uh, specific keywords. Now we're, we're talking IT specifically. So just give us a few examples because I think even if you give examples for IT, people can take that and, and take that and um, translate that into other careers to know which yep. keywords to pay attention for. So, so the biggest thing is not necessarily is to. I, I tell people don't use the same resume to apply for two different jobs. Every job you apply for, you need mm. to tweak your resume a certain way. And what I typically recommend is you know you bring bring up the job listing on one side and have a list. Look at their what skills they're requiring, and you have your resume on the other side, and you say, okay, these those they're looking for these certain skills. Okay, well I have these few. I'm going to list these skills out in bold bullet points right at the top of the resume. So first thing, as soon as they look at it, oh, look, they have this, 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 and this. Mm. Let's go ahead and bring them in for an interview. And at the interview is the chance you really get to prove and win them over that you actually know what you're talking about. So just kind of looking at the different skills. And it's when I tell people, you have to create a different resume for every job you're applying for. I typically get the, the eye roll like, oh, that's going to be so much work. What are you talking about? And it really isn't. You're just making some minute changes to make your resume a little bit more appealing to that HR department. Yeah. And, and, it, and to it kind of what you talked about there, it, there's another option to address even just that. The, the eye roll and stuff is... You're, you're trying to get this supposed dream job. Like, don't you want to put a little work in into what you're trying to do here? Ex exactly. You know, it's if you, this is a job you plan on working at it for a long time or you want them to support you and your family, it's going to take a little bit of effort on the front end side. You can't, you know, a lot of people when they're applying for a job that kind of um, comes from video gaming, like spray and pray their, their resume out there, they just blast their resume or apply for all these random jobs and hope they get something back. And when you take the time to laser focus and deliver your mm. resume or, and go above and beyond and maybe include a cover letter and stuff like that, the, the success rate you're going to get for getting called back for an interview, you're going to find it's going to go through the roof astronomically. Mm -hmm. And how much, how much do you think that could translate right now just into every aspect of life for a lot of people? Oh, it, 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 it really can translate into everything. You know, when you just take a few extra minutes and give, you know, each topic a certain laser focus, kind of uninterrupted, undivided attention, you know, you can really go quite a bit further and you don't have to, you know, a, a, like I, when I teach, you know, people about studying for IT certifications and stuff, you know, you, you don't need to like sit down and grind for hours on a certain topic. Mm. Take these short little 20 minute sessions of uninterrupted focus study session, you know, time or effort into the project and then take a five minute break, get up, stretch your legs, go grab a fresh yeah. pot of coffee or whatever. But that can translate into everything you do really in life. Yeah. So what is it? What what's the reason you really you you enjoy what you're doing right now? Like what is the why for you right now? I I love it's, it's hard to describe. I love being the person that helps like the, the helper. Um the, I love being the hero and getting the satisfaction, you know, like oh my gosh, you helped me open this Excel document that I've been fighting with for months. Um I don't know, just that that feedback is great um you know and 
I, I, I just enjoy technology. I enjoy trying to figure out stuff. I'm a, I'm a natural problem solver and technology just always has a different challenge. Mm. And there's always a different approach to doing something you can do. T- you know, the same thing, 20 different ways and not one way is better than the other, but figuring that stuff out, it just, it really keeps me going every day. Being an IT guy and, and understanding technology, what's your, what's your vision? What's your thoughts on the future with uh, this growth of AI, things like chat GPT and some of the other AI platforms out there? How's that going to impact us moving forwards? You know, I, I constantly get people lately, especially with chat GPT coming out, um, telling me how f- feared they are that they're going to lose their job to AI mm. and uh, the jobs are going to go away. And I do not at all think that's the case. Uh, if anything, it's going to create more jobs in this field. And the, the difference is people, you're going to have to adapt. Um, the IT field is constantly evolving. And if you just sit stagnant, you're going to get left behind. You know, there's, and that's, the a, that's job, a general for anything. When that's you, a general for yeah. anything. Yeah, absolutely. But these jobs are going to evolve. And the people who are going to be the most successful are going to be the people who realize that AI and chat GPT and all that out there, there are just tools to help make you better at what you do. Mm. If you re- learn how to leverage these tools and AI, it's only going to help you out, do your job that much quicker, that much more efficiently. So you can start focusing on other problems. So um, those are, I think, I think those people are going to be the most successful in this career field and is really going to be what the future holds for us. Mm hmm. And I, I think too, um, the more I learn about it, I think there's, like you said, there's just going to be so many more opportunities created from this. Yeah. Now, now there may be a few, posi- like it may not be all roses for everybody. There may be some positions that disappear. Um, yep. But I think in general, it's going to create more than it, it removes and be a net a- absolutely. positive. And at the end of the day, you know, AI is not going to do your job 100% for you. Yeah. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there thinking that chat GBT is going to write all their reports and summaries. And while it does a decent job at that, it still takes that human factor to really adjust those, you know, it's, I, 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 I use chat GPT a lot of times when I'm writing mm. reports or articles or even here on YouTube to help give me that, you know, start. Like if I come up against a wall and I get stuck on an idea, I'll put it into AI and have it help me get over that hump. And then typically it's off to the races for me after that. I, mm. I'll, you know, just get that initial nudge. Um, and that's really what it's come down to. And it, and it's also great for like I use it for writing newsletters for all kinds of things too. I put in what I want to talk about, and then I use ChatGP to make me sound like I actually a- am a copywriter. <laughs> and, yeah, and no, be- ab- absolutely. Yeah, because it I mean it can just clean things up. It can write it better than I. I I'm not a great writer, but with ChatGPT, I get a whole lot better. Well, and it comes back to, you can't be an expert at everything. You know, you have to pick what you want to be strong at and the things that you're not strong at use AI to help be better at those, to help make you a more rounded person. Mm -hmm. So to switch gears back, back to you a little bit, now that you're, what would we be 15 years removed from being a bulldozer operator? Was, was the switch worth it? Oh, a hundred percent. Um, I should have done it sooner. Uh, if, if I could go back, um, I would definitely have done it sooner. Mm, how long were you a, a bulldozer operator? So I was a bulldozer operator only for gosh, probably about th- three, four years. But prior to that, I, I worked other production jobs, mm. um, and stuff like that. We're just working in manufacturing and just poor work conditions. Um, you know, the repetition, again, just, it, yeah, it, it kills you. It, it does, um, and so um, I was all I was always in that kind of line of work. Mm-hmm. And and for me, like the repetition is what killed me because I was I I ended up in production weldings where I ended and just kind of grew through the ranks there. But I also used it when I finally made the decision to make the change. I used it 
that time because it, it was such I had, I had become so good at it it was such mindless work that I could listen to podcasts and so I I, nope. I I told myself well I'm just getting paid to listen to a podcast or I'm getting paid to listen to this book and paid to learn right now so that I can make this life change that I wanted to make absolutely you know in the the months leading up to being let go as a bulldozer operator that's exactly what i was doing you know a lot of times it was a bunch of work and then sit around for 30 minutes while you wait for other people to do their work i would sit and watch a youtube video on it or listen to a podcast or start reading a book uh, on it um and yeah absolutely and um i i don't think there's any shame in that mm. um you know i think at the end of the day, everyone does it. And um, you have to, again, think about, put yourself and your family first. At the yeah. end of the day, that's what is most important in this world. And you got to do what's best for you and your family's well-being. Yeah. Did you did you get any pushback when you went to start applying for all these IT jobs um, from recruiters or interviewing employers or anything like that? Not really. Uh, the pushback came from friends and family, actually. Huh. Um, you know, my wife was 100% on board and supportive of it, but not everyone else in my life was. Um, you know, p- people are like, well, you know, what are you going to do? You've lost your job. Why, why are you making a career change now? This, you, you need just to get back to work. You know, you need to do what you're good at. Um, and it was rough. Um, mm. I, you know, and um, I just kept, you know, my wife just supported me 100%. I, like, I, I wouldn't be where I am today without her. You know, her support in this journey was, uh, she believed in me from the beginning. Um, and when I decided to start this YouTube channel and take away time from being with family, she was still 100% supportive of it. Said, you need to do this. You know, if you don't do this, you're going to regret it. And um, so... It was rough, um, you know, and, you know, I, when it came to like job recruiters and stuff like that, I got a couple, you know, I got turned down for jobs, but not really pushed back. Um, the pushback, yeah, it was, it was difficult coming from friends and family I knew. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, I, I, I think a lot of people don't realize how, how tough that can be. I, I, I was in a, oh, that's I, the worst. Yeah. I my wife was very supportive with the trans, with the the change and, and moving into a new position, um, so I get the support. But I I was lucky I didn't have to deal with much negative feedback from uh, friends and family. So um, no, thanks for thanks for sharing that. I Absolutely. what did you do to cope with some of that? Like how did you get through some of that? Uh, booze? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, um, you know. I, I had a, a couple of times to sit down with my wife and it's like, Hey, you know, I, I had a couple of times, like, I don't think I'm making the right decision. I, hmm. you know, I, I just started get second doubting myself and, um, we would talk through the plan, you know, we'd sit down, talk through our plan, what we were doing, why we were doing this, how we were going to affect and benefit our children's lives. And, um, she would always be bring me back around. Hmm. Um, So just kind of sitting down and, you know, having a mental plan and strategy and keeping, keeping my eye on the end goal. Like I knew what I wanted to do with my career and I knew I could do it. I just needed someone to take that chance on me and I knew it was only going to be a matter of time. Um, And that really is what I, I did to kind of get through that. Yeah. At what point did you feel you had kind of worked through that imposter syndrome? I don't know if I have ever fully worked through it. I don't think, I think, I don't think anyone ever does. Um, you know, if anyone has ever felt imposter syndrome, you know exactly what I'm talking about. What really the moment I kind of felt like I was starting to break through this imposter syndrome, like, and I, I, I say that, but I really think I've made it is when I started getting feedback from my YouTube videos and career coaching, the people coming to me and telling me how that I made a positive impact on their lives and made a positive change for them. That is something else. Like when you start getting that feedback from people cool. that you you're helping, your career coaching, um, or your training, or whatever, that that there, it's just it's the affirmations. Like 
you are changing lives. You are making this world a better place. Um, and that imposter syndrome will quickly melt away. You'll, you'll start living on cloud nine when that happens. Mm. So. Um, so you're, 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 we talked before a little bit and your, your YouTube channel is moving in the right do- direction quite quickly and doing really well. How much of that has been based on consistency or was it just, you had one video go viral? Uh, that was a hundred percent consistency. I, I've yet to have that viral video. Mm. Um, I, I have two of my very original videos that have been my most successful. Um, we're talking like 30, 40,000, of uh, views, but most of it has been consistency and building a community. Mm-hmm. Surrounding myself with a, a community, building this up has been the biggest attribute to success. And, um, you know, and I, I, I can for sure say that because I, I, when I first started my YouTube channel, I ended up, uh, I went through a rough patch. Um, about a year or two in, um, there was a death in the family. Mm-hmm. I went through some depression. I just took, I ended up taking almost two years off and my channel tanked, um, you know, um, and then when I came back to my channel, it was like starting over from scratch. And I actually, in all honesty, I think it was worse. I think I would have had better luck starting a brand new channel, but I, I persevered through it and rebuilt that community up and, um, Recently, I've really committed to consistency uploading, and I've seen the the increase in viewership and comments along with that. So, mm-hmm. um, I think when it comes to consistency, like on YouTube in particular, at least weekly content yeah. is is the key there. Um, you know, you don't have to necessarily do more, but when you start getting less than weekly content, um, you'll start to know notice people lose interest yeah and now i've adopted a um recently this um regimen of trying to release five five pieces of content every week but at least every single day through some form of social media i am reaching out to my audience whether it's just a simple post a twitter post asking a simple question um or you know a linkedin article or something um I'm constantly reaching out to my fan base and I can go on about this, this thought process for hours, but, (laughs) um, by doing so you're keeping fresh in your audience or your customer's mindset. Uh, so when they see something, they're like, Oh, I wonder what they're up to today. And it can just be a simple one liner of, Hey, what are you doing this week to improve your it skills? And that sometimes will start a, a, tangent a comment and i i will have a twitter post that goes well over eighty thousand views wow. and hundreds of comments after off of one sentence post uh and because it, it just starts this conversation and you start reaching new and newer audiences so by doing simple things like that you can really start to grow quickly mm-hmm. so where do you see the bearded it dad in like two three years from now what what what's your vision for it um, my vision for two, three years from now is probably very similar to where, what it looks like now is just to continue to grow and scale mm. content, bring in, uh, we've recently started doing our own podcast. It's, it's literally just called the beard IT that podcast, but we are bringing in industry experts on the show and getting a different opinion than just ours. Um, and I found my audience really kind of values that, that Mm. it's not just me talking to the camera every video is, oh, look, there's someone new on here. And we're talking about these, a different way of doing the same thing I've been doing all along, but it's a different approach and it really brings a lot of value. Um, So just kind of continue to grow that, hopefully kind of, you know, tripled our numbers by then is my goal. I have a goal by hopefully july to hit 10,000 subscribers on the youtube channel right nice. now we're 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 number like just a few away from hitting 8,000 uh so we're with this extra content we're putting out um, we're hoping just to kind of rapidly go through this rapid growth awesome well as we start to wrap up here there's one question i love to ask all the guests and that is what is one lesson that you've learned throughout your life that you want to share with all the listeners never give up um on your dreams Hmm. you know it's this uh, being in this field has always been a dream of mine and you know i had when i got into finally it i had this dream that i would be 
and a networking administrator, you know, kind of the, the head guy in charge of networking for an organization. And that was my like my 10 year goal in the field. Three years into the field, I, I I grinded every day. I worked, I studied. Three years into the field, I became a director of network operation, which is the job position above where my goal was. And just the sense of getting that promotion and feeling that I've made it, I was able to do it in a third of the time frame. It, it's just the greatest feeling ever. And then don't stop there. Once you've yeah. kind of hit that goal, okay. Step back, enjoy it for a second, reassess what is the next goal, and just keep on striving towards improving yourself. That's awesome. Thanks, Dakota. Where can people go to find you? Where can they go ultimately to subscribe to your channel, your YouTube channel, too, to help you Absolutely. get 10,000? Well, I am on all the social medias, but the Bearded IT Dad on YouTube is the best place to find me. That is kind of, I've created my brand around youtube so if you find me on youtube you'll find everything else i have to offer but the bearded it dad on all the social media platforms or the bearded it dad.com uh, if you're interested in what i offer for career coaching and stuff like that awesome and for those of you that want to connect up go go follow dakota at bearded it dad on youtube and i'll also put links below in the show notes um, to make it easier. But uh, Dakota, Absolutely. I appreciate you being on. Thanks for being such a great guest today. Absolutely. And I appreciate you having me. And if you ever have any more questions in the, about uh, this field, feel free to feel free to ask and have me back. Awesome. We'll definitely have you on. Um, everyone, thank you for watching and those that are listening. Um, if you guys uh, enjoy the show, please like and subscribe and make sure to uh, share it with your friends as well. So uh, thanks again, Dakota. Absolutely. Have a great day. Hey, you too, man.